Hello, welcome to my next video on video analytics by the Wizard of Paws. Video analytics is a way to provide information to help make intelligent decisions either by a human or by a robot. So fundamentally, it's about converting a flat pixel image into knowledge. In this video, we're going to follow the IVRA model to help you understand the connectivity between everything to make your video analytics an integral part of your ecosystem. So we'll tar start with some business strategy and tactics areas that tie to video analytics. We we'll run around and identify a sets of value streams and capabilities from the business architecture point of view. We'll develop a list of potential business processes that are impacted by using video analytics and the business organization or functional components therein. And finally, we'll get down into some of the lower level data that will appear because of the video analytics and back around through the business intelligence where you use some KPIs to help evaluate your business. So let's look at some, some business strategy areas that you might want to use or select to guide your video analytics work. There, would, there could be some on security. You know, is a customer safe? Is there a spill, for example, financial? Some of your loss prevention areas fall under your financial. IT, making sure your, your networks are safe and secure. Your customer, talking about selling things to your customer, using information you can evaluate from your video analytics, giving them some cross-sell or upsell possibilities uh, with them buying a particular kind of item. Just-in-time inventory, making sure your inventory is properly restocked and managed so that you can uh, have the, the items available for the customer to buy. So we move around the area to the next group, which is the business architecture. And one of the key areas there is the value stream. So you'll select the appropriate value stream for the strategy you've chosen. One of the value streams is around surveillance, being able to watch particular areas or items. Product affinity, being able to identify things that might cross sell to your customers. Merchandising, making sure you have the right set of products to sell in your store. Loss prevention, identifying areas that you could be losing things because people would steal them. Restocking, that's keeping your shelves fully stocked so that the merchandise can be sold or run through a product affinity analysis. Safety, making sure that the place is safe, there's not a spill or, or items that have fallen over or whatever. Wayfinding, help guide your customer through the store to follow their shopping list or guiding the robots through the store to help uh, pick up pick items for a particular customer, which leads to robotics itself. And robotics have multiple uses. There's a whole video on robotics in retail that you might want to check out. Customer identification. Customer identification through things like facial recognition are key to help with product affinity analysis. Looking for abandoned objects. If somebody sets something down that doesn't belong somewhere, it makes sure that you pick it up and that you keep your customers safe again. And then finally, of course, the point of sale. That's the huge body of work. So once we've identified the value streams that we want tied to our strategy, we need to understand the capabilities of each value stream. And here's a set of eight capabilities that can apply to one or more of the various value streams, starting with dynamic masking used to block a part of a video signal to maintain privacy of an individual. Object detection, used to de determine the presence of an object, which leads to object recognition. These objects or entities can include people or vehicles, may be used for smoke or fire detection. Motion detection, used to determine the motion of objects or people in a video. Are they going into or out of a, an area? Is something moving that's not supposed to be moving? Video tracking determines the location of persons or objects in the video signal through the analysis of an external reference grid, which relates this to the location work. Egromotion estimation is used to determine the location of a camera by analyzing its output signal. Recognition 
The recognition of objects such as people or vehicles can possibly provide identification of the objects. <clears throat> Style detection applied to the settings where the video signal has been produced and detects the style of the production process. Tamper detection determines whether the camera has or output signal has been tampered with. For example, somebody spray painting the lens. So let's move around to the business process models necessary to support those sets of capabilities. Here's a listing of them and I'm just going to read through it. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. So for example, somebody's crossing a line. Somebody's moving in the wrong direction down a corridor or moving too fast. Somebody's running away, for example. Somebody leaves an article where they shouldn't or they pick up an article. Loitering in an area. Floating face down in a swimming pool. There's a nice safety thing to be able to, to handle. Vehicle number plate recognition. Counting objects, so the shelf counting. This is where you would do the restocking. Amber alert, looking for a missing child. Suspicious person movement. Targeted store signage, making sure you have the correct signage in the correct location. Customer demographics, this helps you with the cross sell and upsell things as well as shopper segmentations profile. It helps making sure you have the right material in, in the right place to help with the cross sell. Parking time exceeded. Somebody has been in the parking lot too long. And directing customers to empty parking spaces. This helps with self-driving automobiles, being able to park them. So you can see it's not only inside, but outside as well. Video analytics is everywhere. So once we've identified the business processes, we need to start looking at what information do we need to support each of those business processes. And in the, in the case of video analytics, there, there are two big key components. One is the object of interest, which in this case are people, places, or things, like uh, shopping carts or shirts or hamburgers or, or just people themselves become objects of interest. There's a whole list of them way beyond what's in, in, in here. Those objects of interest exist inside an area of interest. And those you can you could subdivide your store into multiple areas of interest for different types of business processes you want to monitor. So in this case, we've got an area of interest that we want to monitor this, this door and see if somebody goes into or out of this door that they're not supposed to. It's a secure area of some type. And so we can use the, uh, the video analytics to analyze that entry or exit. As, as noted earlier, we can watch a particular object. For example, in this case, it's a diamond ring inside of a display case. And that object, that is our object of interest, the thing that we're looking for. And we've got the camera sitting here watching that. But of course, video analytics isn't simple because you don't know what those objects are. In this case, you want to be able to monitor multiple objects in one area of interest. In this case, we want to monitor this person and make sure this person isn't getting too close to these, this set of dangerous items. Or if they are, they're properly covered. So let's take a quick look at the video analytics architecture as related to the camera. We'll talk about the robotics architecture in a moment. <clears throat> so basically it starts with a video analytics camera and what you wish to do with it. You want to be able to convert the data, the link the data to the point of sale information in order to help correlate who bought what, if you will. Store off the data. Generate real-time alerts if possible or needed. And those alerts get routed to the store manager, the, the security officers, maybe the police. And you, you record any sort of response you can get back. Then you can, you can add stuff in to help expand what that response message is. You can then do a request response pattern recognition model to, to link the request with the response. Uh, you can do a batch input of information into this, into this area. <clears throat> and here we want to get into storing off the data into a video warehouse. This can be used so that you can track to your business intelligence components. 
You can receive alerts to help you to say, hey, we want to look for this kind of individual. And you can generate various kinds of triggers. One interesting thing about this is there is a video analytics RFP to start you on your way towards purchasing a video analytics system. And there is a video analytics schema to help you integrate your system with other systems seamlessly. And so when you get into the other side of the world, the robotics world, the robotics has a whole set of video analytics components that need to be managed as well. Being able to do video capture, being able to do individual recognition, and being able to display things. So as we move around the Ivram model and we move into the business intelligence area, in the video analytics world, there's actually a couple of different kinds of things that you need to worry about. The, the video itself, the vid, video stream, and making sure that it's safe and secure, and being able to monitor your networking capabilities. But on top of that, the content needs to be able to analyze, analyzing your customer, your social media, your robotics, your inventory management, the shelf stocking, the safety and security. So there's a lot of KPIs that relate to the content of the video analytics that are actually tied to other areas in your business. That brings us full circle. I want you to know that I love to share my knowledge as indicated by all the YouTube videos I've created. Please contact me to help you with your retail problem. I am the Wizard of Paws. My name is Richard Halter. My email is richard.halter at cox.net. I have just released version two of my book, Arts for Retail. It's so big that I had to split it into three volumes. Basically, there's a full college degree of information in this series of books and is available on Kindle. Check out my YouTube channel. It's called Richard the Geek. It has over 60 videos on numerous aspects of retail technology, and they're, they're designed for the CEO to understand the technology without getting into all the technical details. Finally, I have a self-paced course. Learn about the next wave in retail called Unified Commerce. It brings in robots, AI, IoT devices, self-driving cars, drones, and so on. It's on Thinkific. Dot com. Thank you.